All right, evening y'all, Chief Prepper here, October 1st. Um, wanted to do hopefully what will be a short video talking about something. When was the last time you did some kind of work that was physically demanding? If you're a young person, 12 hours a day, maybe 18. If you're older, eight to 10. If you're in my condition and age, five or six, where you got cramps in your hands, cramps in your arms, cramps in your back and your abdomen, your hamstrings, possibly in your calves because you just pushed it. So some of you might be asking me why I'm asking that question. The vast majority of Americans are fat, out of shape, can't walk five miles, can't do any heavy lifting, can't do any physically demanding stuff. And that's the kind of life, if things go the way it's looking, you're going to look forward to. Right? I encourage all of you to go over to Prepared Homestead, listen to what Travis had to say today. He's talking about stuff. Alaska Prepper from Rudy has talked about it intermittently but basically stockpiling repair parts for vehicles, for generators, for chainsaws. You know, get an extra bar, get an extra couple of chains, get spark plugs for your chainsaws. Uh, you get generators, get spark plugs for your generators, get oil to change your generator oil with, air filters if they have one, all right? If you have already got generators, are you running them once a month to keep the carburetors clean if you got fuel in them? Uh, if you're not, then I encourage you to do so because otherwise you're going to go out there to use them and you're going to get a rude fucking awakening because they won't start. All right. uh, I had that during the Texas freeze. I had a small generator that uh, for the first two days I could get running twice a day and then the third day it just wouldn't start. And I took it to a... Uh, small engine repair shop and he said the engine was shot and said there was no compression so uh, so the hired help was here today I haven't taken the video I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to take one probably tomorrow the issue is once he gets here then I'm busy talking to him about what I want done and then he's busy doing shit and then I'm helping where I can but it's hard to uh, take time, so tomorrow I will try. It is currently tarped. Hopefully, it will be intact in the morning. We're supposed to possibly get rain tonight. You know, when it rains in Texas, we get wet. So today, the hired help got the header that is that was all fucked up from termites removed, and a new one put in. And less, it was like three and a half, four feet that need to be cut at the two ends and installed. Got the one end cap off got the other end cap mostly off but the panels that are on it have to come off then I can uh, the hired help can knock the rest of that end cap off got to clean up the nails uh, up there both along the eave and then along the uh, each end cap <clears throat> once that's done then I gotta start cutting two by fours and dropping them in between the rafters or the jo joists and what I don't know what they're called they're what's up there that I call it the lower ceiling all right and then the two prefab walls have been cut resized and put back together to 28 inches so if I'm doing my math right assuming I only have to drop in one two by four cut in between each of the joists that's an inch and a half the roof is going to be four and a half inches on top of the wall extension so that's six inches so it's that uh, 28 inches so six will put it at 30 so there will be at least a six inch drop between the eave of the roof and the edge of the new roof that's very important when you build roofs you have to have a certain angle to make sure that the water doesn't pool on top of your roof and then leak down into whatever your roof is on right so Make sure you look at your physical strength, stamina, and endurance. And if it's not 
really good, start working on it. Uh, started watching old uh, Canadian property night. He's doing his doom and gloom, and but he's he's probably hitting the nail on the head that we're getting close to when we're going to have the event that uh, brings NATO and the U.S. into the fight directly with Russia. Uh, Travis talked about if that happens. I'm not stealing this thunder. I'm telling you, go watch this video from today. All right. I don't know if he did one again this evening, but this is the one from the morning. Uh, more than likely, if that happens, and then if we go hot with China, then uh, there's going to be a draft. And if you're in the age of being drafted, you need to understand that you can look forward to that. Uh, you can look forward to being in the military. It's not something that I would want. I was a career military guy, and I think it's gone to shit. Uh, the wokeness and the fags and the transgenders and the lesbos. The fags and the lesbos were there the whole time when I was in there, but for the most part, they were hidden. And because it wasn't tolerated, and towards the end, they changed that shit. Some people will say, that's not fair, they should be allowed to be in there. I don't have a problem with them serving. But I have a problem with them getting special treatment, and then when get in, in there, and then they say, I want a, I want a, I want a trans want to trans transform from whatever to whatever. The problem with that is when they do that shit, they're non-deployable the whole time. So they're in there occupying a fucking job and a space and a number. And that means when they can't deploy, someone else has to deploy twice. So fuck them. Fuck what, what's going on with that. Um, you need to... You need to start working on your stamina. Hinted at this in a previous video, but I would tell you that if you don't have any guns, uh, try and talk to a cops in your local area, find out what they're carrying predominantly. That would be a good handgun to have. Getting the SIG, Sauer, M17, or M18 wouldn't hurt because your interoperability with the military if you're around them. All right. uh, for sure whatever the cops are carrying, all right? Uh, Glocks are good. Uh, I would say a Beretta of any type, uh, A1, A2, A3. A, there are not very many A3s on the Spain market, and A4 is the current one. All right. uh, I think it's an all-metal gun, so you're not getting any polymer there, so that makes it more durable. Um, makes it heavier to carry, though, so just keep that in mind. Uh, I would recommend the Springfield Armory M1A 308. Uh, at least the loaded standard. It comes with a, a better barrel. Uh, if you can afford one of the one of the ones that are higher than that, I think the Super Match is, is pretty pricey. It's like two grand. All right. You, you know, you got outfitted with a sling, some kind of scope, uh, a bipod, and then I would want a laser and a weapon slide on it. Those are hard to do that too, but you can for sure do uh, a scope, bipod, probably a laser. Right. Um, I would also recommend a Bolt 308, Savage 110, pretty reliable, or a Weatherby. Those are pretty expensive though. I'm looking at a 30 odd six that I want to buy. Uh, your bolt gun is what you would use for long range. They call it precision shooting or snipers, you know. Uh, and then possibly an AR-10 type uh, 308, uh, only because the 308 is a really good all-around caliber. It can pretty much drop anything in North America. Elk on down for sure. Grizzly, maybe not, depending. But you can also get a 30 odd six for that. 30 odd six with uh, 215 or 225 grain bullets take down pretty much anything. I would recommend a lever action 3030. Uh, there's a lot of good reviews on the new Rossi, so maybe that one. Or a what's called a JM stamp uh, Marlin, which is before uh, Remington took over. Uh, 3030 is a good all-around gun. Spend some money. You can get the 4570 stainless steel guide gun. That's a that's a thumper. Okay. Uh, 
I recommend nine millimeter and your Beretta. I think pretty much, I think, I think it comes in 40, so with the Wesson and then nine millimeter. But I recommend that. And then obviously, multiple guns for the same caliber. That's what I'm talking about, getting three different rifles in 308. You can reserve the 30 out six to one, 45 70 to one. Those bullets are expensive and they're hard to find. 30 30s, not too cheap, but it's a 30 caliber bullet. 308 is a 30 caliber bullet, and so is 30 out 6. But 4570 is a big, big bullet. Um, the ones I hunt with are uh, 325 grain quantity levolutions, flex tips. Nine mil, forty-five ACP, multiple handguns in the same uh, caliber, all outfitted with night sights, lasers, and weapons lights. So, and I say that individually because while you can move it from gun to gun, if you do that, then every time you do it, you got to reset uh, the laser to zero. The weapons light is not is not important. It's ambidextrous. And then get to the range. Learn how to shoot them and realize shooting at paper targets ain't like fucking shooting at somebody and they're shooting back at your ass. Right? Uh, and like I said, the best rule of thumb is to avoid engagements. That's just the way that is. Don't talk to people and don't intermix with them if you don't have to. Most of the time it's going to go bad. Uh, <clears throat> get out of the city if you can. If you can't get out of the city, uh, at least look for a place to go that's off the beaten path uh, where if you go there four or five times before the shit hits the fan you're not running across people and you got a chance of being able to get there and not have to deal with people right? be careful what you say and who you talk to about what you're doing you don't want a bunch of tag-alongs that are going to be resource eaters you need to understand that if it happens food and water will rule the world Without those two things, you're going to die. So you need food, water, shelter, and security. Bottom line. Anyway. Get to it, folks. You're not out of time, but time is getting limited. So information is knowledge and power. Live a little prep a lot. You prep her out.